Okay, so today we're going to render some glass. Um, here is a quick sketch of um, the sort of final result. Um, a bit of a quicker sketch just to get myself sorted out. But what we're going to do is I'll walk you through doing it slowly. Um, we'll just draw a sort of beaker. These are some, you know, glass tumblers. Um, but you can see here that they're, we're using marker, we're using um, some fine liner and some felt tip pen uh, to get the you know different kind of sort of line weights. So we'll start with that fine liner and then we'll get to um, something a little bit thicker and then add some um, some cool colors to it. I've got a C2 and a C3. Maybe if we've got a C4, we can add a C4 and uh, any color really works, but using a color that isn't so dry would be great to um, help with the sort of see-through part of things and the sort of distortion. So I'm, I'm gonna do this on you know the uh, marker paper, um, starting out with this, with a um, fine, fine liner here. It's also a paper made flare, but it's um, just a, a fine liner. We just wanna get some, like a rough sketch in. So here I'll draw um, a sort of taller beaker, I think. So we're gonna have something that looks a little bit like this. Get the ellipses in. Something like that. And then we can also put a little um, spout to it, right? Just by adding the little geometry there. So that's kind of how it'll look. And yeah, add some thickness to it. So drawing a little bit lightly, good place to start. Um, and what we want to do here is, so of course when you're, like right now, this has no impression of what sort of material it is. We want it to be um, see-through, we want it to be glass, rendered a bit like glass. With glass, we've got some interesting properties because we've got um, a lot of, it is a see-through material, right? So we've got a lot of the, um, you know, the things that are happening in the thickness of the glass. So. What we want to be adding now is we've got our form we want to be adding in um, kind of drawing in a little bit of that thickness and i'll show you in some spots where i think it, it works best um, but uh, around the base is important and actually making sure that you're drawing through and drawing the other side of this ellipse makes a lot of sense and i like to actually add in some squiggles here because um, glass is sort of you know Flow, it, it used to, you know, this is a blown piece of, um, a blown product. So that means we've got, you know, this glass that was once molten. Um, we can show that it has settled in funny ways here. And again, we're just representing things, right? So um, I'll just show you some tricks in what you can be doing to represent see-through things. So of course we can still have, you know, strong outlines, maybe not as strong, um, as in a material that is not see-through, but we also want to be drawing in that kind of thickness. We want to be drawing in almost two lines here. Um, and same thing on this side. And you want to be aware of how it's changing, like these lines are changing not only, you know, in, um, Sort of cross section, but also they'll likely join towards other for other uh, lines you have on the page. So if you have these ellipses, you want to be making sure that they come to those ellipses, um, and have a sort of border around it. But they'll likely do some other things as well. And this is again, I guess, some sort of stylistic drawing of glass. Um, but again, we are all trying to just get a certain um, impression of the material, right? It's not about highly rendering things. So yeah, we can even have some darker 
like the base is likely heavier. We can have some more, like some thicker line weight there. We can have just some more line weight. You can see I'm kind of getting a little bit um, kind of shaggy with that line weight, but it's it's fine because it has some sort of like you know visual noise to it. Uh, we might want to refine kind of what's happening up here as well. In even this sort of scenario, we have glass that is in front of other glass. So we have, you know, again, more more disturbance, more refraction, right? This is sort of what we're drawing. We're drawing refraction. So that's it just with this fine liner. I might go back with this thicker felt tip pen to um, really darken some sections and maybe even make some shapes within it. Maybe darken those bottom lines a tad. Tighten up some of the line weight generally. Um, yeah, but we want to have thicker, darker, bottom half to to the sketch that's looking that's looking good already and um cool so We've got our little beaker. It's looking good. We're smearing some things. That's fine. We'll let it dry nicely. Um, some of the things that we can do. Okay, so also one thing that we can consider is also not just the drawing itself, what the product is, but also that background. So um, what we can be doing, let's draw a nice vignette. So I'm going to stop when it gets to The objects we can kind of talk about a little bit about it but what's happening is we've got um, something that's flat in the background that's going to be distorted by the glass that's in the foreground right so um, yeah there's a couple ways that we can kind of consider it as long as you sort of indicate some distortion you're basically doing a good job um, and generally speaking, it should be following some of the, you know, if we had an ellipse here, it would probably be following a little bit of that. So um, I'm gonna draw a generally just a little bit of, um, of a, you know, not a straight line here, but, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna colorize some of the top of this beaker so you can, so it looks like that flat background is, is being distorted by something. Um, yeah. So what do we need? We need a, let's grab our C2, I'd say. Um, and here's where we're going to be adding some definition and depth to the glass. You want to make sure you're leaving some white space, some white strokes, but here I'm going to generally say that on the, this is the sort of darker side of things. So we also need to get that on the inside. Um, and here I'm going to be adding in some lines that go up and down. Also the edges, because the edges are going to be um, they're going to show how the thickness of the uh, of the glass. Sorry, I'm, I'm a bit uh, brain foggy today. Okay, so generally we want to have some nice flowing marker shapes. Here I can sort of emulate the same thing that I did with the pen. It's actually probably a good idea. Um, but generally speaking with glass, we want to make sure that we're kind of creating some interesting shapes that, uh, and leaving enough white space. So, we just want to, again, be the indicator of it being see-through, that we can see through this thing. 
Uh, the other indicator that we can do, apart from kind of drawing the other side and almost shading that other side, um, yeah, I'll add a little bit more noise to that other side, is also when we have a bit of a drop shadow, cast shadow with this, it's going to be very light. I'm just grabbing a C3 here. So we're going to add a little bit of a cast shadow here. Actually, how, yeah, so I'm going to have, there's a little bit of a shadow going on here, and then we're going to have it go out and sort of show that's where. Right, so we've got a little bit of a shadow going on like that. Now, really, it's just the out the, the lines here, um, you know, glass. It's hard to say that it has a shadow, but we can use it uh, to our advantage by actually drawing the same, you know, glass, uh, you know, the, the glass that's here that we see that we're kind of trying to refract. We can say that it has a bit of a shadow. There's something on the ground that's being, um, you know, it's not completely 100% see-through uh, when it's that thick. So we can use that to our advantage by showing that and also showing it in the background. So we're kind of like drawing the cast shadow um, uh, behind the piece as well as uh, that we can see through it, right? So that's the sort of idea there. And again, we can use that C3 in some other ways to add some darkness to the, uh, the shape of the beaker. So right now, you know, it's, it's, it's shaping up quite well. Let me find a nice color. It could be any color, but uh, why don't we find, I've got a nice green here. So we can use this green where I'm gonna color part of this, maybe not the entirety of, of it, but I wanna make sure that the um, vignette that's behind the beaker will also get some, some green treatment. So again, we're gonna start by outlining the shape. Okay. We're going to add some green. Maybe I'll make it full on this side. Something like that. Right? It's looking pretty good. Maybe we make it a little bit bolder with darker outline. Okay. Now, what we're going to have happen here is we're going to add a little bit of the green as well to kind of the like you know, thickness that we talked about earlier. The same idea can be applied um, here where we're instead of draw, putting down some shading, we're gonna add in some color. So I don't wanna do it right to the edge, but we wanna find uh, locations here that we can create little shapes um, that can pick up that green. And obviously we can have this bottom corner nice and green or this bottom line. So we can do something like this. Something like that could show how the, um, something behind it is being refracted in the glass itself, right? So that we're picking up some of that noise. Um, again, this is a balance. So finding that balance with line weight is important. Okay. But those are the, some of the things that you can consider when drawing with or uh, trying to render glass. This is obviously glass in its full entirety, but I would say that the same things apply like it's entirely in glass, but the same things apply when you just have a component in glass 
and um, uh, you just want to you know make sure that it has that kind of spark. I would say that um, there you can get even more life to the to the page when it comes to rendering glass if you can add um, if it's not entirely on a black white background but you add a color to it and then you um, erase some of that color on the glass itself then it makes it pop even more so those are some of the things that you can kind of do obviously you can't do everything on um, your white mic mark paper I would say to, to to really get to that stage you can like use chalk pastel and then start erasing from it um, that's a good way to colorize your analog sketches but the more um, efficient and probably more useful um, point or uh, workflow is, is, is likely to, to do this in a digital program and do it in sort of post. Um, so yeah, those are some uh, techniques, tips, tricks to uh, build up that uh, feeling of, of uh, you know, rendering some sort of glass. Uh, yeah.